breakfast with Stephen and Ellie. Good morning to you. Good morning, and time to go through your papers now. And joining us this morning is the deputy editor of Spite, Fraser Myers, and the anthropologist and Keen Walker, Mary Ann <laughs> oh, Walker. Are you happy now? Every hour. Um, yes, I am. Third I'm time lucky. Keen Walking Ambassador for the British Mountaineering Council. Oh, oh you? yeah, yeah. You could have that on. Mary Ann, you're full of surprises. You don't need to be a kind of hardcore high person. Oh, no. To get up a mountain. No, no. Enjoy it. No, you don't. Turns. But just remember, take uh, a survival bag and all that sort of thing with you. Yep, mobile phone. Mobile, mobile phone. phone and a nice... guided walk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But proper, proper big, thick survival bag. We always did it. <laughs> That's not necessary if you're walking around your local country park. Oh, no, no, no. But if, but if you're going up a mountain, if you're going up a mountain, <laughs> there you go. Uh, I say it's a Cumbrian fell walker. I've got a tiny one now. Yeah, it's about that big. It weighs 18 grams. What, as a survival bag? Yeah. So it's like a foil thing. Yeah, it's, um, it's clever. It's waterproof on the outside. Bright orange. So yeah, yeah. You do need to orange, get yeah. spotted. Um, and it's silver, yeah, so it reflects heat on the inside. But don't forget, mm. if you put a cold body inside a survival bag without another warm thing, it won't get warmer. Yeah. If you can, walk down yourself. Need a double one. <laughs> Stephen? Go on, you kick us off then. Yeah. Well, there is a small thing called a Tory leadership contest that's going on at the moment. The second one this summer, this year so far. Uh, but we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about other things. <laughs> uh, Fraser Myers, yeah, we'll start with you. <laughs> Wait, that, this is actually not on the list right now. We're going to be talking about the milk dumping protesters we've seen in recent weeks. Oh, these, yes. Just one in four were actually detained by the police. That's in the mail. Yeah, so this is a, the animal rebellion protests happening around the same time as the Just Stop Oil protests and all the other sort of Extinction Rebellion uh, offshoots. And, it, it, yeah, it's quite, it's quite surprising. Just one in four of them have been detained by uh, the police. I, think, I, I always find this fascinating. I think that there is, you know, this is probably the biggest indication that we have a class system in Britain, the way that these protesters, compared to anyone else, are sort of treated with uh, kind of kid gloves. I remember a few months ago... They tend to be quite privileged. Um, yeah, and so you'll see scenes of, um, you know, people blocking roads and stuff, and the police will be make, asking them, would you like a cup of tea and things like that, rather than sort of moving them on as, they, as you would expect them to be. Mm. Um, you know, and the... The sort of class element is funny. You can see it from just the names of some of these protesters. So some that have been sort of interviewed in the press. One of them was called Eben Lazarus. Another called Amy Rug, Rug Easy. Indigo Rumbelow. Yeah. You know, it's the Indigo kind of... Indigo Rumbelow. Yeah. <laughs> <it's>... <laughs> and they're at schools costing like 40 grand a year or something. Exactly. You know, it, is, it really is that sort of uber-privileged sort of section of society yeah. in, in revolt. Um, mm. <laughs> and well, it's not that if you if you you know if you posh, you are allowed to protest. Absolutely, but you should but you should also if you cause criminal damage or whatever be arrested for it. And then and then you even this even in courts this is kind of uh, having an impact. So there have been cases where judges have said you know. I think what you're doing is wonderful, and you're not like the usual criminals. I see you're a different really? type of person, you know. Oh, so, that's not right. So there that's is a kind right. of, yeah, so there is a sort of class divide here. Do you know what, though? I find it actually really difficult to watch that kind of footage, and if you're listening on the radio, it's the pouring of milk and cream out across cross flooring and across counters when people in this country are struggling to eat. Mm. or heat their homes, and it's just a waste of, of good food. And the people have got to clean it up. Yeah, you know, it's not fair. It's, yeah, it's not very nice, is it? No, no. If I, did it in, if I did it in Tesco's, I'm pretty sure I'd be held by the staff and then yeah. arrested. But would you, though? Yeah, I think I probably would. If it, well, you wouldn't do it. No, I don't think you would. I think people would talk to you as a nice, middle-class, white... I'm not middle-class. You are. I'm um, working class. Hang on a minute. You might no, not work. No. Class. No, I'm sorry. Have don't lose your class. roots. Don't lose your. Don't lose your roots. Oh, I'm working class with working class values. I was always stand by that. You can have working class values. I'm not middle I'm class. You don't live no. middle class lifestyle, my love. <laughs> you got to face it. No. It's, it's stay with me. I grew up on free school meals. But I can't possibly claim a kind of. I understand what it's like for someone who's living. In but struggling I, with poverty. Well, no, no. Because, I, because that would just be an absolute hypocritical. My statement. friends and and family and all the rest of it are still good, solid working class people. So I know it's why I know it's why I know what people are going through because I see it and talk to it and hear it. So I'm, not going, I'm not going through it myself, admittedly, but I'm still working class. I'm proud. I think you can you can be you can both you can be both things. That is the complexity of the British class system, is yeah. it not? Yeah. Um, because fundamentally, you can afford to kind of choose 
a nicer bottle of champagne or, or you know, uh, a bottle of claret or whatever you <laughs> do of an evening. Um, doesn't drink at all. Have a cup of tea. Have a, have a cup of yeah. builder's tea like everybody else. In a yeah. chipped mug, watching Corrie. Yeah. Well, not Corrie, it's too depressing. Yeah. Uh, but there uh, you go. Yeah, I mean, Fraser's absolutely bang on. I imagine if it were um, protesters for Black Lives Matter walking into Selfridges. Would they uh, be, uh, you know, politely escorted by the security guard saying, thank you for coming, goodbye oh, now, yeah, see you yeah, next yeah. week? Uh, or would they be, um, yeah, treated in a very different way? Yeah. So it's class and race. Yeah. Oh, well, there you, mm. there you go. Right, at least I've got that off my chest, though, about me. <laughs> in case you were wondering, I ain't posh. Um, mary Yo. Treating you. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, that's probably classed as cultural appropriation. No, you shouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> treating your pet like a human could harm its health. Yes, this is a really interesting one. Now, I was drawn in by the pictures of cute dogs. I mean, albeit wearing stupid jumpers and, no, like, that's... bobbly stars. No, no, it's really bad, Ellie. Don't oh. do it. It's bad for the dogs, bad for the dogs. Treat dogs like dogs. Yeah. Um, and a group of uh, vets have come out and said they're seeing an increasing trend in the way that people are treating their pets like you would a loved human. Mm. So, for example, putting them through really gruelling courses of chemotherapy so oh. they can make it to Christmas oh. or something like that. Now, if that's your granddad, oh. he understands... What's happening, yeah. ..why he might want to put up with the pain and the suffering and the discomfort and the just plain unpleasantness in order to see his grandchildren at Christmas or whatever. Your dog doesn't get that. Yeah. Mm. What you're basically doing is torturing your dog for months and then it dies. It all starts so with actually people think who about them who, who want to be called mummy by their pets and then it ends up with this. Yeah, so mummy, then jumpers, which yeah. causes them to overheat, carrying them instead of walking uh, because yeah. the dog needs to walk. It's the way of coping oh. with stress, it's the way of them staying healthy. Mm. Um, don't. There's nothing wrong with being mouth, I mean, my... mouth fresheners for dogs. Oh. No. Which is just destroying their microbiome so they can't digest their food yeah. properly. I don't think there's anything wrong with being... I mean, I'm dad to my cat. Timmy. That's OK, but you, you let it be yeah. a cat as oh, well, I'm cat. guessing. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. I think it's quite nice to treat dogs like... Oh, well, any pet, well, but not... especially dogs like they're part of the family. I mean, I'm guilty Oh, of that. yeah, that's for sure. My Lulu, I mean, we have conversations. She doesn't talk back, right. but we chat, and I, I like to dress her up in a little jumper. Do you? Oh, Christmas, I well, she's a Christmas oh. outfit, but she, oh. she likes it. And I think Does so she? many How people do you know? tolerate she it. She loves it, and she loves me, and, yes, yeah, it's oh. a two-way street, and we have that understanding. I mean, I, I, I get the point that, you know, chemotherapy, animals don't understand, and perhaps that's not fair at all. You do need to know where to let them go. Mm. But I think it's nice now that... Maybe more, it's, it's a generational thing, isn't it? I mean, a generational two ago, you still have dogs in the kennel in the back garden, wouldn't you? Mm. But now, dogs are, and pets, are, they're part of the family. They are people. That's yeah. lovely. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree I with that. But you have to kind of bear in mind that they are still animals. So the, the final quote is, um, sorry, a bit, bit dark for a Sunday. Oh, go on. Uh, people need to take on board the fact that whatever happens, their dog is going to die before they do. Oh, Instead, there's a tendency to treat them like a child and do their utmost to stop the animal dying. Yeah. That's the bit where we have to sort of yeah, separate yeah. out the realities. Yeah, have to no, I'd agree. Go. I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd agree with that. Uh, can we talk about this weird piece in the Mail on Sunday, Fraser? Well, it's, it's not weird. It's, it's only weird the way I'm, I'm interpreting it. <laughs> but talking about <laughs> Megan, right? Yeah. Um, Sarah, so Sarah, but Sarah Vine, who's written this piece, has sort of admitted that she plays the bimbo. Yeah, so... Um, Actually, I can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so Megan's podcast, um, if, if you're a fan of it, no. is about... Um, it's called Archetypes. Really, it's about sort of stereotypes. And she, each week, they'll take, like, a word that is sort of thrown at a woman, and they'll sort of deconstruct it. And the most recent one was bimbo. Right. And Megan's very upset because people thought that... Which she basically, she was like a suitcase girl in Deal or No Deal. The US version is a lot more oh, glamorous she? than our one. So they have um, they have these glamorous women bring out the suitcases. Right. Um, a bit like a boxing match. Yeah, a bit like, yeah, like yeah, exactly, a ringo, like, yeah. like girl in, in, in a boxing match. And she was upset that, you know, around this time, before, she, before anyone knew her, um, she was being judged purely on her looks rather than on her... Uh, intelligence. Which presumably uh, she was being employed for her looks and well, her intelligence. Well, exactly. She didn't get to say a word on this programme, so it's just a kind of absurd oh, uh, complaint. And now that we do know about her thoughts, um, 
I'm not sure that she stacks up that well either. Oh, no. Fraser, that's <laughs> outrageous. Oh, well. so, well, no. I did listen to that podcast, don't ask me why. But I, um, for research purposes. For research purposes, exactly, Fraser. And I just kind of, I kind of received it as though it's really hard being really pretty and really intelligent. Oh, isn't it? That's how yeah. I, and I was like, oh, poor you. That's how, I mean, that's how I understood it as well. Yeah. There's another one, there's another one she was complaining about the word crazy, uh, but, you know, Megan does say some crazy things, you know. Ooh. One of my favourite things recently was when she tried to say that people in South Africa were out on the streets celebrating her wedding to Harry, yeah. you know, as if it were the release of Nelson Mandela. People are going to call her crazy for that. I mean, yeah. that's fair enough. Yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, it's, 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 very, it's very odd, isn't it? Can we have a look, Marianne, at the Mail on Sunday? Um, no. and oh, yes, you can. Yes, we yeah. can. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're going right down to the bottom. And, and yeah. Recycling, because we talked about bins. We had, we had yeah. Dave Clark, the bin man, on an hour great. ago. Enjoy Dave. Yeah, lots of people have got He likes very clear symbols on his bins to know what you put in the bin. So they've got some symbols. We would all like it because up to half of us have no idea about the common recycling symbols on packaging. So this is a, um, a survey carried out by which 48% of people think that a green dot logo, which is green circle with kind of two yin and yang arrows mm. um, that I'm gonna to show to you. What's that mean? Have we, have we got a graphic? Number six. Um, well, I would just say it's recycling. Isn't yes, it? that's what I would think too, Ellie. No, he's wrong. Oh, no, oh, it's not I thought recycling. that was correct. Um, uh, not, <laughs> not recyclable. Do you want to see? It, <laughs> it means, get this, manufacturer has complied with waste legislation. As in, they followed <laughs> oh, the law. The so one that bottom, bottom right. right. Bottom right. Number six. So it doesn't this. mean anything, then? It doesn't mean a thing. It means that they're not breaking the law. Um, uh, which, if ever there were a bit of greenwashing, <laughs> I don't know what. So top left, that three yeah. uh, arrows, that means recyclable. Right, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that well, one still have sense, to check with yeah. the local council. What's the number two? Number two means compostable, but only in industrial composters. So if your oh. council has one of those compost bin caddy things, you can put it in there, but don't put it in your home composting. Don't compost it yourself. Because otherwise, when you're digging out your compost in the spring, it'll still be in there, the plastic wrapping of the magazine or what have it's you. It's utterly confusing. It and is that... very confusing. It's partly because of the, the materials technology is so yeah. complex and you've got all these different kinds of plastic. Toothpaste mm. tubes, not recyclable. I didn't know that until oh. I read this article because oh. it's, um, it's laminated plastic and aluminium and it's too expensive and too difficult to recycle. Oh. So lock that in the... Uh, I'll stop general... putting that in the recycling bin then. Yeah, put it there in the bin. Um, Mary Ann, Fraser, we have to leave Thank it you. there. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.